Hello, my name is Angel Raya. I'm with the Institute for Bioengineering of Catalonia and also with the Center of Regenerative Medicine in Barcelona, both in Barcelona, Spain. And I will be presenting today the results of our efforts at modeling human neurodegenerative diseases using IPSL technology. The technology to reprogram uh, somatic cells to pluripotency was introduced by the laboratory of Sinia Yamanaka in 2006 uh, in the mouse, and shortly after was shown by three independent labs to be also applicable to human somatic cells. The main applications that IPSL technology is currently being used for are listed on this slide and include basic research on the mechanisms uh, that underlie reprogramming, how pluripotency is acquired and maintained, how senescence can be escaped and self-renewal acquired, and also two uh, areas of application with biomedical interest, including uh, the design of uh, strategies for autologous cell replacement and uh, modern human disease. Probably the most ambitious biomedical application of IPS cell technology will be to use IPS cells or IPS cell derived cells in cell replacement therapies for degenerative diseases or even in genetic diseases to correct the genetic defect. Proof of concept for this approach was provided by your group already five years ago in the context of Fanconi anemia, where we showed that we could uh, generate IPS cells from patient somatic cells correct the disease so that IPS cells will be disease-free and then differentiate these IPS cells to hematopoietic progenitors, which were in turn disease-free as well. Uh, whereas we could see that all of these steps were feasible and feasible uh, with efficiencies that were clinically compatible, we also found a series of limitations to the clinical implementation of these uh, strategies. Some of these limitations were uh, essentially technical in nature and have been solved uh, in the last four or five years, including the way we generate human IPS cells or the way we introduce the genetic correction. But other limitations are still outstanding and will require extensive research to be addressed, such as the implementation of uh, specific differentiation protocols that will result in functional differentiated cells with the ability to integrate, functionally integrate uh, within the host tissue upon transplantation, and also addressing the safety concerns, basically tumor genesis of these cells. These concerns are not so relevant for the third biomedical application of IPSL technology, which is that of modeling human disease. Our ability now to reprogram somatic cells from any person, including patients, to pluripotency uh, creates unprecedented opportunities to model these diseases uh, in vitro in the laboratory. In fact, several dozens of diseases have been modeled so far using this technology, most of these diseases being either monogenic or with a very clear genetic component to it, and diseases of early onset or uh, congenital. However, most highly prevalent diseases are not congenital or early onset monogenic diseases. So we decided to test if IPSL technology was also useful to model highly prevalent diseases. And for this, we focused on Parkinson's disease. In this disease, there's a progressive degeneration of a specific subtype of neurons within the brain that takes decades to manifest in the patient. So our first challenge was to see if somehow we could reproduce these events uh, within the time frame of experiment in the lab. Also typical of uh, highly prevalent diseases, most of the cases of Parkinson's disease are sporadic and there's no clear genetic predisposition to suffering the disease. There's however a small percentage of 10-15% of the patients in which the, the disease runs in families, and when you look at those families, you can identify genes of mutation of which predisposes to suffering the disease. In this case, uh, I want to emphasize uh, mutations in the LARC2 gene, which is the most frequently associated uh, cause of familial Parkinson's disease. 
So for this project, we recruited a total of 15 individuals, four of which were Parkinson's disease patients with uh, mutations in the LARC2 gene, the same mutation but otherwise unrelated patients, seven patients with sporadic Parkinson's disease, no family history, no mutations in any of the known uh, genes to be associated to this disease, and four uh, individuals with no neurological history. We generated iPS cells from these patients and controls uh, with the idea that if there was any genetic predisposition to suffering the disease, it will, it will be captured uh, within the iPS cells, and then if we could uh, differentiate the disease-relevant cell type, in this case, ventral encephalic dopaminergic neurons, we could be able to detect the appearance of disease-related phenotypes uh, in vitro. The criteria we use in our lab to define bona fide IPS cells are quite standard in the, in the field and include uh, testing their cell renewal ability, making sure that these cells are able to be passaged more than 20 times while maintaining the karyotypic uh, stability, and their pluripotency ability uh, checked by expression of pluripotency associated transcription factors and surface markers by immunofluorescence and RT-PCR, their differentiation in vitro towards derivatives of the three main embryo germ layers, ectoderm, definitive endoderm, and mesoderm. And in this study, we also use teratoma formation assays. And in terms of molecular characterization, we DNA fingerprint these cells to make sure that the source of origin are the patient's uh, fibroblasts or keratinocytes. We check the integration of the reprogramming transgenes by PCR on genomic DNA and southern plot. And we also check the silencing of the reprogramming transgenes by, repro by RT-PCR and the reprogramming of the gene expression profile, checking uh, selected uh, transcription factors and the epigenetic reprogramming of these cells by looking at the DNA methylation profile of OCT4 and NANOP. Here's a summary record of uh, one of the IPS cell lines generated for these studies. We generated a total of uh, 50 lines representing the 15 individuals, and we can see the results of the tests uh, mentioned in the previous slide. In this case, uh, this IPS cell line corresponds to a mutant Parkinson's patient, so we can see in panel O uh, the presence of the mutation in the expected uh, gene. The different IPS cell lines were differentiated into the disease-relevant cell type, which is, uh, in this case for Parkinson's disease, ventral mesencephalic dopaminergic neurons. And for this purpose, we teamed up with the laboratory of Antonella Concilio at the Institute for Biomedicine of the University of Barcelona, who had developed a protocol for the directed differentiation towards this specific cell subtype uh, that relies on the delivery, conditional delivery of the, the ventral mesencephalic transcription factor uh, LMX1A. Pluripotent stem cells differentiated with this protocol show the expected markers for a9 subtype uh, ventral mesencephalic dopaminergic neurons, uh, which are produced at high yields uh, using this protocol. Mature neurons, after one month of differentiation, uh, are able to release dopamine upon appropriate stimuli and also show uh, electrophysiological properties uh, characteristic of this type of neurons. When we applied this differentiation protocol to the IPS cells generated from controlled or Parkinson's disease patients, we could obtain dopaminergic neurons from all of them within the same numbers as with the same uh, characteristics. The only difference that we could observe was that dopaminergic neurons differentiated from mutant patients but not from control or sporadic patients showed abnormal accumulation of uh, alpha-synuclein in most of the dopaminergic neurons. 
this was not entirely unexpected since uh, alpha-synuclein and LAR2 have been shown in animal models to directly interact, but it gave us the opportunity to look at what the effect of mutated LAR2 could be in dopaminergic neurons from the patients. So to address this, we collaborated with the laboratory of uh, Anna Cuerva Albert Einstein, and we found that LAR2 uh, was a substrate of a very specific type of uh, degradation pathway known as chaperone-mediated uh, autophagy. So LARC2 uses this pathway along with other substrates, including uh, alpha-synuclein. And what we found is that mutated LARC2 in the dopaminergic neurons from mutant patients uh, caused a blockage in this degradation pathway, causing alpha-synuclein to be also stuck and be accumulated in these cells. But so far, other than this abnormal accumulation of alpha-synuclein in the dopaminergic neuron from the mutant patients, we could not find any Parkinson's disease-related phenotype uh, in the cells differentiated from the patients. So we reasoned that since degeneration takes decades in the patient's brain to occur, we may have to culture our cells uh, during longer periods of time. And for this purpose, we set up a protocol that allows maintaining our dopaminergic, IPSL-derived dopaminergic neurons in vitro for up to 75 days uh, in culture. After this prolonged time in culture, most of the dopaminergic neurons from controls were of the type 1 shown here with multiple neurites well branched, whereas those from uh, patients were mostly of type 2 bipolar degenerating neurons or type 3, uh, frankly, uh, degenerating neuron already undergoing apoptosis. Individual results from all the subjects used in this study show that the four controls, after prolonged time in culture, their dopaminergic the neurons were mostly uh, type 1 normal neurons, whereas the patients both idiopathic and uh, mutant patients, the vast majority of dopaminergic neurons showed uh, varying degrees of uh, neurodegeneration. These results can be quantified in terms of length and number of neurites in individual dopaminergic neurons. And the results plotted here show that both sporadic and mutant patients showed a decrease in the number and length of uh, neurites. These signs of neurodegeneration after prolonged cultural times were associated to a marked impairment in autophagy, macroautophagy, in dopaminergic neurons from uh, both sporadic and mutant patients as judged by the accumulation of uh, autophagosomes a marked increase in the basal levels of modified LC3. A significant decrease in LC3 flux in the pamelergic neurons from both uh, idiopathic and mutant patients compared to control. And a compensatory increase, although not statistically significant, of uh, autophagosome formation in the pamelergic neurons from uh, mutant and sporadic patients compared to control. It is important to note that none of these changes were evident in cell types older than dopaminergic neurons, uh, such as dermal fibroblasts in the case shown here, or in fibroblasts derived from patient iPS cells. In electron microscopy analysis, we can easily detect an increased number of autophagosomes in dopaminergic neurons of patients, both idiopathic and large 2 mutant patients, compared to control. And we can also see in the patient's accumulation of lipid droplets and dilation of the ER, which are characteristic signs of uh, neurodegeneration in this cell type. Uh, the accumulation of autophagosomes uh, occurs in the form of autophagosome rather than autophagolysosome, indicating that the blockade in uh, macroautophagy in these cells is caused by an impaired fusion with lysosomes. The results from our studies uh, demonstrate that 
IPSL technology can be used to model complex diseases such as Parkinson's disease associated to aging, and that this can be done within the time frame of experiments uh, in the lab. We have identified this is relevant phenotypes, and we have also studied the role of a mutated protein within the context of the disease-relevant cell type from the patient. We hope that the models created uh, with this technology will now allow screening of drugs that will prevent or rescue the phenotypes identified in vitro for this disease. I'd like to end by acknowledging the members of my laboratory that have participated in these studies, as well as uh, several collaborations that we have maintained for this uh, work, especially with the laboratories of Antonio da Concilio, Ana Cuervo, and Eduardo Tolosa Hospital Clinic, Miquel Vila, José López Barneo, and Josep Canals and Jordi Alberg at the University of Barcelona, as well as the different uh, agencies that have funded this research. Thank you very much.